And you couldn't own any weapon you wanted to own. From the very beginning of the Second Amendment existed, certain people weren't allowed to have weapons. So the idea is just bizarre to suggest that some of the things we're recommending are contrary to the Constitution. Gun violence in this country is an epidemic. Let me say it again. Gun violence in this country is an epidemic, and it's an international embarrassment. You know, we saw — I asked the Attorney General and his team to identify for me immediate, concrete actions I could take now without having to go through the Congress. And today, I'm announcing several initial steps my administration is taking to curb this epidemic of gun violence. Much more need be done, but the first — first, want to rein in the proliferation of so-called ghost guns. These are guns that are homemade, built from a kit that include directions on how to finish the firearm. You can go buy the kit. They have no serial numbers, so when they show up at a crime scene, they can't be traced. And the buyers aren't required to pass a background check to buy the kit to make the gun. Consequently, anyone — anyone from a criminal to a terrorist can buy this kit in as little as 30 minutes put together a weapon. You know, I want to see these kits treated as firearms under the Gun Control Act, which is going to require that the seller and manufacturers make the key parts with serial numbers and run background checks on the buyers when they walk in to buy that package. The second action we're going to, the second action we're going to take, back in 2000, the year 2000, the Bureau of Alcohol, Tobacco, and Firearms released a report on its investigations of firearms trafficking in America. The report was of pivotal value. It was an important tool for policymakers when I was in the Senate and beyond, at all levels, to stop firearms from being illegally diverted into dangerous hands. Today, with online sales and ghost guns, times and trafficking methods have changed, and we have to adjust. We also have to ask the Justice Department to release a new annual report. This report will better help policymakers address firearms trafficking as it is today, not what it was yesterday. The third change, we want to treat pistols modified with stabilizing braces with the seriousness they deserve. A stabilizing brace hook in a pencil essentially makes that pistol a hell of a lot more accurate and a mini rifle. As a result, it's more lethal, effectively turning into a short-barreled rifle. That's what the alleged shooter in Boulder appears to have done. I want to be clear that these modifications to firearms that make them more lethal should be subject to the National Firearms Act. The National Firearms Act requires that a potential owner pay $200 fee and submit their name and other identifying information to the Justice Department, just as they would if they went out and purchased a silencer for a gun. Fourthly, during my campaign for president, I wanted to make it easier for states to adopt extreme risk protection order laws. They're also called red flag laws, which everybody in this law knows, but many people listening do not know. These laws allow a police or family member to petition a court in their jurisdiction and say, I want you to temporarily remove from the following people any firearm they may possess, because they're a danger and a crisis. They're presenting a danger to themselves and to others. And the court makes a ruling. To put this in perspective, more than half of all suicides, for example, involve the use of a firearm. But when a gun's not available, an attempt at suicide, the death rate drops precipitously. States that have red flag laws have seen and seen the reduction in the number of suicides in their states. Every single month, by the way, an average of 53 women are shot and killed by an intimate partner. I wrote the Violence Against Women Act. It's been a constant struggle to keep it moving. We know red flag laws can have significant effect in protecting women from domestic violence. And we know red flag laws can stop mass shooters before they can act out their violent plans. 
I'm proud, excuse the point of personal privilege we used to say in the Senate, I'm proud that the red flag law in my home state of Delaware was named after my son, Attorney General Bo Biden, our son, excuse me, Joe, who proposed that legislation back in 2013. I want to see a national red flag law and legislation to incentivize states to enact their own red flag laws. Today, I asked the Justice Department to publish a model red flag legislation so states can start crafting their own laws right now. Just like with background checks, the vast majority of the Americans support these ex extreme risk protection order laws. And it's time to put these laws on the books and protect even more people. The Attorney General